The read from Democratic heavyweight in the House of Representatives, Congressman Emanuel Cleaver. Always good to have you, sir. Thank you for coming. Good to be with you. What do you sure. make of, uh, of these as they come out in waves like this? Uh, what, what do you make of it? Well, there, there are two issues, I think. Uh, one, uh, certainly there were uh, things said that uh, John Podesta uh, or the others who, with whom he had email exchanges would prefer not to have out in the public domain. I mean, they're private, and and uh, and they they would generate some concern. Uh, but uh, the other part of this is that something is happening to us as as Americans. Uh, you know, I, I thought that what Mr. Trump said w uh, was despicable, but but think about this, and all of us need to think about it. He was in a private conversation on a bus, uh, you know, and uh, John Podesta and those guys were, were d talking privately. Uh, I think that we're forgetting that some of this is unconstitutional. I mean, we have a right to, to privacy in this country, or we're supposed to have. And I think we've got to, when this election is over, I think the media, uh, political leadership, we, we need to sit down, uh, along with all of these, uh, with, with federal agencies, and try to figure out, look, w are we going to have a society where, uh, you know, a, a man and a woman could be in, inside their bedroom talking, and somehow, if somebody could pick it up through some new techno technology, that they have the right to write it in a newspaper, put it on television. I am very, very much concerned, hmm. and I think this partisan politics aside, we've got a serious problem that we're facing in this country. You know, that's I've never heard it framed that way, um, but you raise a good point. I, I, maybe that's why a lot of people know you certainly as a prominent national figure uh, in a Democratic congressman. You're also a Methodist minister. Um, so what I'm asking now is about trust and veracity. Uh, yes. Forget about what we hear in the tapes about Donald Trump. That's been gone over a lot. But one consistent theme from these leaked emails, Congressman, whether you, you support the view that they were leaked out in the first place, and I, I definitely see what you're talking about, is that maybe, just maybe, uh, this confirms people's worst suspicions that politicians say one thing in front of rabid audiences, quite another behind closed doors. We get that impression of Hillary Clinton talking about trade deals she despises in public, but behind closed doors or with private groups paying her a lot of money, uh, she's for unfettered, free access trade. The same with going after Wall Street, zealously mm -hmm. doing so when she's on the stage debating with Bernie Sanders. Not so much when she's talking to those same Wall Street firms uh, behind closed doors. So I, I guess what I'm getting back at is something you touched on. What, what's real? What, what, what is acceptable? And does it confirm our low bar estimate of politicians in general? You're absolutely right. It, uh, all, all, this entire campaign, I think, is doing enormous damage uh, to a number of institutions. One, uh, the, the institution of, of U.S. government, uh, the media, uh, we, banks, I mean, w everything is being torn apart. Uh, what was said in uh, uh, the transcripts, rather, uh, it, it's not something that we, we anybody would like. I mean, I, yeah. I, I, I wish some of those things hadn't been said. But uh, but you know, I, I, when I talk nobody's going to win on this. Congressman, I'm not just blowing you some. When I talk to you, you're a straight shooter. People might not like what you say, but I've heard you say them off air. I've heard you say them on air. And I guess you let the chips fall where they may. Maybe that's the minister in you. Maybe that's just the decent human being in you. I think what has happened, though, sir, and what worries me is I think politics has become like professional wrestling. Everyone has their part and their role they play. And then uh, they shake hands and afterwards say, all right, we'll, 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 we'll fight this out a little later. You know what I mean? I do, and I, well, you and I ought to write a book, because yeah. I, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, I was in my committee hearing, I'm on the banking committee, used to be called the Bank Committee, Finan Financial Services, right. and Mel Watt, who is now the, the, the top guy over the GSE, the general, uh, the, the Fannie Mae, Fre Freddie Mac, right. and so I was getting all frustrated, and he leaned over to me, and he said, because the hearing, because nothing was going to happen as a result of the hearing, he said, he leaned over and he said, you do know that this is not real. And I thought, oh my goodness, he's right. Yeah. And I, I think that, that we are playing roles, and, and the American public is the victim. We, uh, Republicans, Democrats, media, all of us need to try to figure out how to change the tone. Nobody's going to trust anybody. As these WikiLeaks come out, 
uh, it, it's going to dim, d diminish trust and at the same time uh, c continue to erode the, uh, privacy in this country. Uh, and I think all of that is, both of those are dangerous. Yeah, no, because the privacy issue notwithstanding, I mean, um, we're all human beings. But as human beings, we're, we're cynically exposed to politicians who don't seem to be what we think they are, right? Right. I mean, uh, uh, any time a, a politician says one thing and then you can have evidence that he or she says something differently, it further damages everybody. Yeah, I hear. It's like TV anchors who obsess with their hair, you know? How's mine, Congressman? <laughs> I just. Uh, all right, sir, always good having you. Thank you very, very much. Good to, all right. good to talk to you. He